Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got a review of Suicide Forest by Jeremy Bates. So this is a book I read as a buddy read with one of my patrons, George Ann Marsh, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So it's part of a series that Jeremy Bates has written called The World's Scariest Spaces. Um, and Bates is, I think, a self-published author. So his his books are published, um, the, like the publishing house that they're published under is called Gillenine Books. Um, but looking up Gillenine Books, I can find nothing about them other than the fact they've published Jeremy Bates' books. So I suspect that actually it's his own company and, and he's publishing his work himself. Um, and what he's what he's landed on is quite a clever wheeze. And he's written this series of books called World Scariest Spaces, uh, places even, uh, where he writes about you know different different famous places in the world that are uh, you know that are creepy. So there's another one about the catacombs, for example. Um, and this one is about this forest in in Japan near Mount Fuji, um, which is known as the Suicide Forest because um, it's a place where people quite often go to commit suicide. Um, and indeed, it's it, it's a place that kind of got a bit of notoriety in the West um, not that long ago, a few years ago, because there was some YouTuber whose name I've now forgotten, Logan Paul, was it, or something like that, who went there and filmed there, and I think that like a, a body was shown in the video or something like that. There was a there was a big you know hoo-ha about it, understandably. Um, but yeah, I think by by latching into things that people know already, Bates gives you a hook um, already for his books, which I think for a self-published author is quite a good idea because it means people might stumble across these books by searching for other things. Um, so I think it's it's you know it's quite a good it's quite a good wheeze, as I say. And I think I think he's had a reasonable amount of success with it. He certainly you know his books certainly seem to have a decent number of reviews on on places like Amazon. Um, and I can see why people like them. I've got, I think I've got either the second or third book in the series already on my Kindle. Uh, I obviously bought it in some Kindle deal at some point. Um, and I, I'm quite looking forward to reading it on the basis of this one. So anyway, let me let me tell you what it's about and why I think it's good. And um, let me preface that by saying this is not a fantastic book. This is not a book that's going to change your life. But it was a really quite enjoyable read. And sometimes, you know, sometimes that's what you want. You just want something that you can kind of switch your brain off for a bit and enjoy reading. Um, and this, you know, certainly fulfilled that for me. Um, so it's about a, a group of tourists who are like Western tourists who are traveling in Japan. The two main characters, the, the guy and his girlfriend, are like English as a foreign language teachers over there. And they're taking a break from work and they're traveling with an, another teacher and then they meet some other people along the way as well and they're in, they're intending to climb mount fuji um, and there's like there's problems with the weather or something like that so so they can't they're not allowed to go up the mountain and they decide instead to camp overnight uh, in this forest near mount fuji which is the suicide forest um so they decide to camp there and then you know, go up the mountain the next day when the weather's cleared um, and as you can probably guess, given that this is a horror book, and this is a horror book, uh, you know, horrible stuff starts happening. So there's a definite creepiness, you know, straight away, and they're kind of warned about going to stay in the forest and that kind of thing. Um, and as things progress, you know, they, they, they find evidence of people who've committed suicide, like empty cars and things like that. And then eventually they, they find a body. And then as things progress, like stuff starts happening to them as a group. And what Bates, uh, I thought, did really quite well with this is to, to to keep you unsure as a reader as to what's really going on. So you experience things you know, through the eyes of the characters and you don't get any additional information. So there is something really creepy about that, really effective, I, th I think, about that, about not knowing, as, as you do in this book, you, you don't know whether either people are you know, genuinely committing suicide or whether there's, you know, like a, a, a killer out there who's bumping people off, or whether there's something supernatural going on. And Bates, you know, eventually you get a resolution to that, but Bates manages to keep things balanced for quite a long time and does it quite effectively. So you, you know there's something bad going on, but you don't know what it is. Um, and that's a really effective way of maintaining suspense, I think. Um, 
And as I say, he, he does a good job of it. So what you've got in this book then is a, is a decent set of central characters. They're not fantastic, but they're all sufficiently different from each other that you, you know, you never get them confused or anything like that. Uh, and they're, you know, they're interesting. And, and particularly the kind of relationship dynamic between the main character and his girlfriend is quite interesting. There's another female character and there's a bit of tension there. So that kind of keeps things interesting. Um, and then you've also got a lot of different styles of horror um, wrapped into it and I won't go into those too much because it will it will spoil it but there's a lot of different stuff going on in this book and the you know the climax ends up being very different from the beginning part of the book but but equally enjoyable um, so I had I had a lot of fun as a horror fan with this book because it blends a lot of different things together um, and then you've also got some reasonably interesting um, kind of reflection on Japanese culture I guess through through western eyes um, so there's the little facts and things like that he kind of throws in, which I imagine he's doing in the other books in the series as well, given they're also in different places in the world, which which is kind of a bit cheap, I guess, and a bit travelogy almost. But actually, I found quite interesting and it just adds a little something extra to the book. Um, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and I wish I wish Bates every success. He's got a ton of books out, you know, more than just the books in this series. But all of them seem to have kind of interesting hooks to them so like there's one called the sleep experiment or something like that which immediately gets you thinking you know just that title gets you thinking and imagining what the book could be about so i think he's very good at this kind of self-promotion type of thing um, but based on you know the evidence of this book that i've read he's also good at actually you know writing a book that delivers um, and is an enjoyable read so yeah i'll definitely be trying more by him in the future so i hope you found that interesting let me know in the comments if you've read any of jeremy bates's books and what you thought of them um, and as always thank you very much for watching hope you're safe and well out there hope you're really good stuff and i'll speak to you again very soon cheerio